Bird and welcome to another episode of Foo Bar. In today's episode, we are going to identify a user and make predictions on what they would like to order in our coffee shop. If you like to watch more content like this, subscribe in the red button below. I post video every Tuesday, so let's get started. <laughs> When you're doing bots, usually you're doing customer facing applications. So knowing the user is very important. And the more you know the user, the better service you can provide the users. People are very good at meeting users and remembering them, but computers are even better. They know every greedy detail about their users. So why not to take advantage of that? And bots will help you to do that. So we will write the piece of code in our bot that will recognize a user and will offer them their last order. So for example, I'm a user and I am saying, I would like to order a drink to my bot. And the bot, because I'm a recurring user, I've already been in this service, they will say, would you like to have a large latte like you did last week? And I will be like, Ooh, yes, sure, I only like li large lattes. So yeah. That makes life easier for the user because they don't need to type, they don't need to feel anything else. They know that they will get a large latte. If they don't want a large latte, they say no and they order like they will normally do. The user ID comes from Lex to Lambda in the request. So we can know which user is in every time they are calling our Lambda. The user ID is unique in all the platforms. So you will see that in Slack, the user ID is different than in Messenger and in the test framework that the bot has. So what exactly we are going to do? We already have a database where we put the order. So whenever we want to fulfill the order, we save the order in that database. So now we are going to add a new field to that database that will be the user ID. So whenever a user makes an order, we are going to store the order ID, the drink, the coffee type, the size, and now the user ID. And then we will be using Dynamo streams. If you don't know what Dynamo streams are, I'll leave you a card here so you can go and check them out. But basically they are a functionality, a feature from Dynamo that whenever a register gets modified, it will create an event in a stream and that stream can wake up a Lambda. So we will create a new Lambda that will be wake up by this event in the stream and we'll grab all the information that is, has been put in that register and we'll save it to another table like the users. So we will save the the user, the coffee type and the size that they order. So next time when the user comes to the coffee shop, we will check in this table if they already exist. If they do, we will offer them exactly what they ordered before. So it sounds complicated, it's not. We have the Lambda that we already created, that is our intent Lambda. Whenever that intent lambda has a fulfillment in it, it will call the dynamo. It will store in the dynamo the order. When the order gets stored, the dynamo will write in the stream the event that is this user ID, drinks and size, and that another lambda will pick up and then will write to another dynamo table. That is the user uh, table. And then whenever the user comes again to the intense lambda, the user comes again to the intense lambda, it will check in the user table if the user exists. Go to the code and check it out. So let's start by adding the user ID in our order database. We are going to the database manager and we are going to create the user ID in the item. We need to pass it as a parameter and we will get it from the intent. So now that will be storing the user ID. Then we go to manage fulfillment. And then in the save to order database, then we need to pass the user ID as the first parameter. And we also will need that in the fulfill order method as the first parameter. And then we pass it there as well from the main um, function in the module. And then we can get it from the intent. Dot uh, intent request user ID as we do, for example, in the console log that we have since day one. That user ID is unique, so we can make sure that every user is identified with some string. Now, that's all we need. Our user ID 
is going to get stored in our database. We can deploy and we can test as always. And then we try it. I would like to order a coffee and then espresso and yes. And then we can go and visit our DynamoDB database and we can verify that now our order ID is there with espresso the normal and now there is user ID that Slack had put for me. The next thing we are going to do is going to create a stream from that DynamoDB table that will trigger a Lambda. So for that, we just go to the serverless YAML and we add those two lines and that will uh, enable the stream on that table. So meaning when something happens in that table, it will send the new image to the stream. And then when there is an event or uh, an element in that stream, a Lambda can be waken up. So we will write that in a moment. Now we can deploy and then we can go to Dynamo and we can verify that the stream is there. New latest stream and that's the stream, the word are every end for the stream. And now we are going to create a new Lambda that will be waken up when there is a new event in that stream. So we we'll call it save user favorites and it will have an event that it's a stream. And the type of that event is a stream of DynamoDB and then we are getting the ARN and we are doing the uh, the get of that ARN and we will put the name of the um, cloud formation resource that is coffee orders table is the same and then we are going to put the uh, name of the stream ARN so that will construct that URL that I will just show you that we saw in the DynamoDB table that is very horrible so then you can reutilize later this in in other environments so this is a feature in the new serverless uh, I'm using 1.15, so I saw it for the first time in this version, maybe it was before, but if you don't have the latest version of serverless framework, go and download it. Before you need just to write the whole ARNN, so it was very hard to manipulate, but now they have put this, this nice notation. And that batch size and starting position, it will always send us one event and the position will be from the latest, so it will grab the last event. So this is very handy, so this will be putting, uh, waking up with one event from the latest event that is in that stream and we wake up this, uh, this Lambda. Now we go to the handler JS and we create that Lambda. What that Lambda will do is grab the elements in that, that we are passing, the user ID, the drink type and the size, and it will write it to another database. In the MonomoDB, you can, why we are doing it two databases instead of having one, because in the order ID database, we are putting orders. So there is many orders and, and that's used for the orders purpose. So we'll have different order IDs and the user will be many times in there. So if they come multiple times, then there will be many times. So it's hard to find the latest user. So we need to create some logic and, and do that kind of things in DynamoDB it can be tricky. So for this simplifying this, I want to create just a database. The user is only once in that table and that will be the latest. So whenever a new order for the user comes, it will replace whatever was before. So the latest order of the user will be in this table. So it's very fast and the main key will be the user ID. So we don't need to do any weird processing of the database. So here we're just getting the item that will come in the event and then we'll print it out in the console, for example, and we will create a new folder that will be user favorites, for example. And there we are going to add a new file that will be user favorite JS. And there we will create a new method. It will call the database manager and save it to the database. So it's very, very straightforward. So we pass the item to the user favorite. The item comes with this .s because it's a image from the stream so we need to get the dot s because it's a string and that's how we get the exact element like value in that attribute of object so you can always print the event in console so you know what is coming out for you so we will go to the database manager and we are going to refactor it a little bit because now we are storing in the database twice so i don't write to write the same code over and over again so i will just create some kind of function then we'll just write an item to a database. I will create a method that is called save item to table and I will pass the table name and the item 
and that will do all the magic for me and I can reutilize that in my two methods that are saving to different tables and I can replace it in the save order to table method that we had there I just passed the table name and the item and for the other one I will just do the same now we don't want the order ID we just want the drink the size and the user ID and then we pass that table name and item we haven't created yet the user table so we are going to do that we are going to our serverless yaml to the resource part and we are going to create a new table with that name so we just can basically copy the coffee's orders table and modify the parameters that we want to modify them copy the stream because you don't need it and we want to call it coffee user table and then we want the id to be user id instead of order id and the table name will be coffee user table don't forget to uh, add permissions to that resource to put exactly the same way as we have done with the coffee order table you can deploy test i would like to order a coffee double espresso and that will are you sure you want the double espresso yes thank you and then we can go and check the logs these are the logs of the new um, lambda we created that is saving to the user table and we can see that the element has been saved the espresso double and the user id so now i can go to dynamo to that new table and we can check that the, there is the drink the espresso and the id now what we want to do is we want every time the user is a returning user we can offer them uh the previous drink so whenever the user says i would like to order a drink meaning that there is no slot in that intent because if they say i would like to order a latte we'll ignore the checking in the database because they already know that they want a latte no matter what they ordered before but if they say i would like to order a drink maybe it's possible that they want exactly the same than before so we are going to our manage dialog and we are going to create a new function that will call find user favorite given a user id we return what is their favorite coffee and size now we need to create a new function in our database manager that it will be looking for an item and to do that we use get and we just write that method that is a simple get from the database and returns an item drink size type and user id in the manage dialogs if the coffee type and the size are empty that means that is the first uh, interaction of the user with the bot we will check if there is a user in with a favorite in our database already meaning that the user is a returning user if the coffee type and the coffee size or the coffee size are not empty then we will proceed with the normal validation that if we find the favorite for the user then we can print the log uh, we can print the item in the in the console instead of returning the item we can return a result as we do for uh, the validation and as we do for the fulfillment so there we can have a coffee the item and then the message we would like to ask the user would you like to order the size of the item and the uh, coffee type and that's what we return to our main method we can just basically uh, put the size and the item in the slots and then we can create a new response type of confirm intent confirm intent is basically asking the user if they want to confirm this intent so if they say yes then the order will be placed if they say no, then the order will be dismissed. So this is a confirm intent response. So now we are going to our Lex responses and we are creating a new response called confirm intent from where we will put the dialogue action that is confirm intent, the intent name that it will be the name of the, this intent, the slots that we just pre-filled with the drink and the size that the user wants, and then the message that will be, would you like to order this coffee and this size? if the user is not fine what we will do next is we'll ask the user what they want so we will do a response a delegate 
and the user will say I would like to order a drink and that user is not found in our database so then the next case will be let legs continue with their normal flow that it will say what kind of drink you want the last thing we need to do is to uh, pass the user ID so then the find user favorite it can find that user ID and then also we need to do a couple more things in order for this to work that is give the get permissions to that database and also install lodash because our get functionality is using it and if we don't install it then this won't work so lodash is just a very useful library from javascript if you never use it it will really nice it helps you to do things with arrays and objects and all kind of things like that so it's really really nice and it i use it there in the get so after you add lodash and and then everything should be ready and you can just deploy after you deploy we can go to slack and we can test i would like to order a coffee would you like to order a normal espresso? Because that's the last thing I order, yes, and that your order will be placed. I would like to order a latte. So then I'm skipping the the size and the drink are not null, so then it will go through the normal way. And then I would like to order a drink, it will suggest me the normal latte, what is like I already la say, and it will say no, it will say don't worry. And if I can start again, I would like to order a large lot there. This was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. In the next episode, we are going to modify this bot to do multi-intents. What it means to be multi-intents? That the bot can do many things, not only order coffee. So stay tuned to see what is going on. Around here, there are other videos that YouTube suggests from, to you from my channel. So go ahead and click them on and keep on watching and I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao!